This is the camera that made me jump from Canon to Sony, the Sony a7S III. But is it still worth buying in 2023? That's what we're gonna talk about in this video. It's hard to believe, but the Sony a7S III was released in October 2020. That means that this camera is already three years old. I myself shot with the Sony a7S III for the very first time back in 2021 when I was working alongside my brother Maddie on his YouTube channel. I was literally tossed into the deep end with Sony cameras because I remember on my first day of working with him, he tossed me a Sony camera and said, let's start shooting. And I just had to learn on the go. After a day of shooting with the Sony a7S III, I knew that this would be my future camera. So why do I love the a7S III so much? And is it still worth buying in 2023? I'm gonna answer those questions for you guys. Oh, and let's throw a lens back on this camera body because I know a lot of you guys were distracted and stressing on my behalf, thinking of all the dust particles going onto my sensor. So the first and probably most obvious reason why I love the a7S III is the image quality. It's a full frame camera shooting 10 bit 422, meaning you have a lot more color range than an 8-bit camera, and as well, there's just so much information to color grade with. You can film 4K 24 frames per second for vlogging, then 4K 60 and 120 frames per second to do slow motion without cropping. Okay, there is a little bit of a crop. I think it's a 1.1 crop factor when you're filming at 120 frames per second but comparing to the a7 IV, it's a 50% crop. So I really love the fact that whether you're vlogging or filming slow motion, you're getting the full sensor read and getting as much information in the image as possible. When it comes to color grading, there's so much information and flexibility in post when you're working with the S-Log3 footage. Now, if you have no clue what S-Log3 is, it's basically a very flat picture profile in the Sony cameras that allows you to get more dynamic range means you're gonna have more information in the highlights and the shadows, and as well, you're gonna have a lot more flexibility in post to do your color grading. Essentially, you're gonna have a blank canvas for your footage, allowing you to control the direction of the look you want. Now, for some people, it can be a bit daunting shooting with the S-Log3 picture profile because they don't know how to color correct it. If that's you, no worries, I've got you covered. I actually just released my very own Cinemalect collection, and in this Cinemalect collection, I have a conversion LUT. Basically, that's a filter that's gonna take your S-Log3 footage that's very flat and desaturated and bring a normal amount of contrast and saturation again to then allow you to color grade it. So what I do is I just open up Final Cut Pro, throw my footage in the timeline, add a custom LUT with the conversion LUT, and then from there you can start grading. So I'll add one of my grading LUTs, for example, Cinema LUT 1. Make sure you bring down the strength from 100% to maybe 60 to 70% or somewhere in between, depending on what style you want for your footage. But literally in just a few clicks, you have beautifully graded footage with these Cinema LUTs. So if you're interested in some help with your color grading workflow, I'll make sure to link below my Cinema LUT collection for you guys to grab. Now, when you're filming in S-Log3, you wanna be mindful of the ISO you're using. Which brings me to the second reason why I love the Sony a7S III. It is ridiculously good at low light situations. When you're filming in S-Log3 with the Sony a7S III, you're gonna have two base ISOs. Basically, that means that at ISO 6400 and at ISO 12800, you're gonna get your cleanest images. So when I'm filming with S-Log3, I maybe go from ISO 640 to 1600, 3200 max, but from there, I just jump then all the way to 12,800. So for example, if you see the footage at 3,200, then at 6,400 to 10,000, I think, you're gonna notice it's really grainy and noisy, but the moment you jump to 12,800, it's clean again. And that's really great with the Sony a7S III because that allows you to be super flexible with your shooting. For example, myself, I used to shoot a lot of weddings and in the middle of the daytime, you might have a lot of lighting. So I would shoot at ISO 6400 to get that base ISO clean image coming out of the S-Log3. But then in the evening at a reception, it's gonna be really dark. So then I would just jump all the way up to 12,800 and I have enough light and it's gonna be a very clean image. The third thing I love about the Sony a7S III is the flip LCD screen. Now, a lot of cameras have now adopted this technology, but back in 2020, this was the first Sony camera that had a flip out LCD screen. Before that, you just had this flip out screen back here, which was okay, but if you're a content creator who's filming a lot of solo stuff, you wanna be able to see 
how your footage is looking, what's the lighting is like, what's the composition, and whether or not you're recording, because there's nothing worse than filming a whole section realizing you didn't have the record button on. So I love the fact that I have this LCD screen all the time in order to monitor what my footage is looking like. I honestly don't know how people used to vlog without this kind of LCD screen. It just seems impossible. Now coming from Canon to Sony, I think my only complaint about the Sony LCD screen is that if you're filming in slow motion or any footage, you can't just scrub with your finger on the screen. Instead, you gotta use these backwards and forwards buttons. I'm assuming this change could just be made with software, so hopefully in the future, Sony would update their LCD screens to have that function that you can just scrub through the footage with your finger. Fourth thing that I love about the Sony a7S III is the reliable autofocus. I don't think there's been a time where it's missed focus on my face and the shot's been ruined. And that's just crazy to think about because back in the day when I started with my Canon 550D or my 5D Mark II, I was shooting everything in manual. And now I couldn't imagine doing what I do on a daily basis while shooting manual. I'm so reliant on autofocus, especially as a solo shooter. And that's why it's really important that you have the confidence in your camera that it's focusing right. And Sony's just made it so easy. It's really just tapping the screen on an object or the eye tracker is always following your face. So you're always nailing focus with the Sony a7S III. Honestly, I feel like life as a videographer has been made too easy almost for us. And the fifth and last reason why I love the a7S III is the stabilization. If I'm completely honest with you guys, I never shoot with a gimbal. I literally shoot 90% of the time handheld and then maybe 10% of the time I have the camera on tripod or gorilla pod when I'm doing these talking head style shots. But literally all my B-roll is just filmed handheld. I'm never using a gimbal. And it's because I just find the Sony stabilization so good. For example, just recently, I was shooting with my new friend Linus from Germany here in my hometown, and we were just taking some quick B-roll shots of the Sony a7S III. I'm panning, I'm zooming in, I'm doing ninja walks, and it just looks so good. It looks like I'm using a gimbal, but I'm not. And if there is ever a moment where it's even a little bit shaky or not so stabilized, then I just add a little bit of stabilization in Final Cut Pro and voila, the footage looks fantastic. Now, when you are using the highest active stabilization on the Sony a7S III, it is cropping in a little bit, so you're losing a little bit of quality and detail, but in my opinion, it still looks great for YouTube videos and anything you're gonna post on the internet. Now, up until this point, I've mostly just praised the Sony a7S III, but there's gotta be some downsides. There's gotta be some flaws. And I think the main criticism I hear of the Sony a7S III is that it's only a 12 megapixel camera. So people feel like this is a video camera only. It is not a photo camera. But the interesting thing is, I've been shooting all my photos on the Sony a7S III. And hear me out, this is why it works for me. I am not printing my photos in huge resolutions and I'm as well not shooting wildlife where I need to crop in like crazy. The photos that I'm taking, I'm using as is. I don't need to crop or change that much. And for me, the quality is great. So I've been shooting all my photos and all my video on the Sony a7S III. So maybe for some people, this wouldn't be a great photo camera, but I would say for 80%, 90% of people, it's a great photo camera still. And the fact that this is a 12 megapixel camera is the reason why it has such great low light capabilities. So if the trade-off is being able to print massive photos or crop in a lot versus having the low light capabilities, I would much rather take the low light capabilities in the Sony a7S III. Now, is any camera perfect? No, and there's always things that you could develop in a camera. Something that I would love to see in Sony cameras, for example, if there is a Sony a7S IV, I would love to see built-in ND filters. You don't have to then fumble anymore about with the filters and stuff like that. That'd be a great addition to the camera. But other than that, I love the Sony a7S III still. Even three years later, I'm still shooting with this camera. In fact, I like this camera so much, I have two of them. The camera that's filming right now is a Sony a7S III, and this is my B-roll camera. So to answer my question from the beginning, is the Sony a7S III still worth buying in 2023? I would say yes. It's the ultimate workhorse camera and definitely worth your investment. And if you do end up buying the Sony a7S III, I've actually made a whole video on how to set up your camera that you can watch here. And remember to subscribe. I want you to be benefiting from this channel.